Hi everyone, my name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch and welcome to the first episode of the Practical Parallelism in C++ series that I'm doing. Uh, so in this series we're going to be going over uh, the very basics of parallel programming using C++. And specifically we're going to be looking at a couple different things. One of them is going to be using uh, the new uh, standard thread that is a part of uh, C++, uh, the C++ 11 standard. Um, and that's a way that we can write very portable code that will run on, uh, that you can compile on multiple different platforms. So it's not tied to a specific thread implementation. Uh, so there's a couple things that we need to do uh, before we start out uh, in, doing, in looking at this example, this call from example in C++. And the first question we have to ask ourselves is why in the first place do we want uh, parallelism or multi-threaded applications? Why do we care about this? And one of the big reasons is um, CPU uh, single-threaded performance has you know, taken kind of a, a downward turn, as in it's not getting much better over the past couple of years, or even past decade or so. And the real reason why is uh, an end of something called Denard scaling, where we can't really increase the frequency anymore because of this crazy uh, increase in power that we get. Um, and there's also problems with making transistors much smaller. You know, once we start hitting the seven nanometer, or five nanometer levels, um, we get all these kind of nasty quantum effects coming in that make it really, really difficult to make uh, uh, on the fabrication side of things to make very large, um, uh, very large chips like we've been doing. So what's the alternative? So we still have a bunch of transistors and uh, even if we can't make single-threaded performance uh, faster, we can start exp uh, exploiting different kinds of performance. So one of the different kinds of performance that we can exploit over um, something called instruction level parallelism, where we try to just find independent instructions that can execute all of the, uh, that can be overlapped with each other, uh, is something called a data level parallelism. So there may be different pieces of data that we can uh, work on at the same time that are independent of each other. Another uh, type of parallelism is task level parallelism. There might be completely different tasks. Maybe we're processing requests that are completely independent and they can be done uh, as completely different processes or on completely different threads. And we don't need our CPU to say run twice as fast. We might just need to be able to run two things at the same time. Uh, so that's kind of the motivation for a lot of uh, multi-threaded applications. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of space for improvement with uh, you know making things multi-threaded as hard as it is. Um, it's it's one of the uh, ways of you know keeping this performance increase still going in the absence of traditional transistor scaling. Now it's also important to note that not every application can be parallelized. You know we sometimes we'd all like to think that hey we can just throw anything on a GPU and you know run a hundred thousand threads and get some massive speed up or something but the fact of the matter is that there are some applications that just aren't very uh they're not very parallelizable there's a lot of de uh, immediate dependencies between uh data or uh between different operations and you know dependencies are a real killer when it comes to multi-threaded applications because you you wind up having you know so much synchronization overhead that it ends up not being worth it. Another example where parallelism really isn't worth it is when you have very small tasks where maybe the overhead from just creating the threads themselves may cost more than the actual task that you're trying to uh, parallelize. So we don't wanna, so it's important for us to think about which tasks we should be uh, parallelizing and which tasks may be uh, maybe aren't good candidates. So in this uh, in this series, we're going to be using uh, a couple different things. So starting out, we're going to be using this extension that or this um, add-on to the uh, C++ standard, this uh, from the standard library uh, thread. So this allows us to write very portable code instead of having using a very specific implementation for multi-threading. Uh, we can kind of just abstract it away from the, with using the standard library. 
Uh, we'll also look at specifically doing some stuff with pthreads and also with MPI and OpenMP, as well as maybe MapReduce if we have uh, some time later on. So starting out, let's go ahead and just kind of jump into this code right here. We've, we've been talking enough about, you know, the basics. So let's, let's, uh, let's kind of jump in here. So we're going to start out, we're just going to have a very simple function that's going to take one parameter, which is a thread ID. And all it's going to do is print out uh, launched by thread, and then it's going to print out the TID uh, or the thread ID. Now, uh, then in our main function, we'll do something new. So we'll create a bunch of uh, an array of thread objects right here. So this comes from the remember, this comes from the standard library. So uh, we'll create 10 of them. So we're going to basically end up launching 10 threads. Now, uh, threads need an initial function that, uh, in order to, you know, kind of get going, they have to kind of like when we write a, uh, a regular program in C++, where we have to define a main function. Similarly, a thread needs an initial function. Now, initial function doesn't have to be the main function. It can be any function that we define. And so that's, we're going to initialize all of these with this call from function. Now, what we'll end up doing is we'll, uh, we'll just loop over all of the uh, elements in this array. And we will uh, call the constructor for thread at each of these, and we'll pass it two things. So first, we need to pass it the initial function, which will be call from. And then uh, for call from, we're actually passing a parameter, which is uh, I, uh, this TID. And the TID will just be equal to the index it is in that uh, array of threads right here. Now, then of course, we can't forget, you know, so we've launched 10 threads, but it's important to know we have 11 threads going at this point because we have the 10 threads that we launched plus the single thread uh, that's actually running the main function. Uh, so we, we have 11 threads going. So then we want to wait for all the threads to complete. If we don't wait for all the threads to complete, what could happen is the main function could complete before some threads may even get scheduled. If that happens, we'll end up killing everything, um, all the other threads, and then they, they may not have even run yet. So not a great thing, uh, not generally the uh, expected behavior for us. So we can uh, kind of synchronize back and wait for these threads to finish using this uh, join from the thread object. So for each of the thread objects in this array, we'll call join. And what this just says is wait for this thread to be finished and then uh, move forward. And so we'll do that for all 10 threads uh, within this array and then we'll quit. Now. Uh, uh, th there's some great exercises here in expectation versus reality. Now, what we may expect to happen is that we'll launch these threads in order. So thread 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We should get uh, from call from launched by thread 0, launched by thread 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We should get after that a launched from main and then it should, you know, exit or return as we expect. And I'll go ahead and put a breakpoint here so we can catch the output uh, printed to the standard out. Now, while this may be what you expect to happen, it's important to know that there's no guarantee with the scheduling of these threads. And also it's important to know that C out isn't specified as being thread safe. And so what do we mean by this? So because we're not doing any kind of synchronization whatsoever, we're going to have multiple different threads potentially trying to write to a this uh, C out object at the exact same time or write to standard out at the same time. So what does this leave us with? Uh, leave us with? It can leave us with a jumbled mess. And that's kind of what we'll see. So we'll go ahead and make sure that this is built. So we'll rebuild. Okay, we've succeeded. So let's go ahead and launch it and see what happens. Okay, so we ran, and ah, we see, uh, we, we, we are right to be a little bit suspect. So what do we see? First of all, we don't see necessarily the exact order that we expect. So we see launch from thread zero, launch by thread uh, one. So those two kind of got interleaved when they were printing. Launch by thread three, we see this gap right here. Uh, launch, so we're seeing some new line characters not match up with the rest of the sentences. 
Uh, so we see a lot of kind of crazy interleavings here. And we even see this launched from main getting printed in between that and the launch by thread nine. So we see a lot of kind of crazy things here and that's because we're not doing any kind of synchronization in this yet. But however, it's important to also know that this isn't a guaranteed order or, or even repeatable. So let's go ahead and stop this and let's run it again. And let's look at our output. So we get a completely different output. So this is all very up to how are these different threads getting scheduled. Now it's this one seems a little more composed. So we get, you know, zero, one kind of messed up, two, three kind of messed up. And then we, it seems to kind of go back into line. We get four, five, six, seven, eight before we end up getting thread nine and this launch from main kind of getting interleaved again. So, you know, what we'll end up seeing is that we can run this as many times as we want, but we're never going to be guaranteed for it to uh, print in the same order. And so this can make a debugging kind of a nightmare. So it's important that we develop some good practices that we're going to look at in later videos as far as synchronization and writing, you know, good quality code. Uh, another couple things we should keep in mind is the difference in terminology. So uh, there's real two terms that we want to you know, kind of stress, there's concurrency and there's parallelism. Now, when we're talking about concurrency, we're talking about multiple things being at different points of execution at the same time, but this doesn't necessarily mean that they are running at the same time. So I can have a thread that is, that hasn't printed anything yet, a thread that's halfway through printing, and then another thread that just finished printing all in flight at the same time. However, they don't necessarily have to be running at the same time. So I could kind of be jumping between the different threads, running them one at a time. Now this is still concurrent, but it's not parallel. When we talk about parallelism, we're talking about running multiple things at the same time. So just kind of a terminology thing. So that's going to do it for this example of a very basic, this call from function that will say launch from thread, you know, whatever. And we see that, you know, we can parallelize things uh, but we see that parallelism can be a little bit tricky. And uh, in future videos, like I said, we'll go over things like locking and synchronization so that we can get the expected output that we want. So as always, if we go to the GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch, we've got all the different videos that are coming out, some in parallelism, some practical Python stuff. Um, Archit uh, computer architecture stuff that I present in This Week in Architecture. But if we go ahead and go to Practical Parallelism and C++, we've got uh, my email if you have a specific example you want to go over, uh, my environment I work with, as well as a link to the uh, videos and the concepts covered, and a direct link to the file that we covered today. So, like I said, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.